So what's up, people, and welcome to the Chapter 82 discussion of Kaiju Number no. 8 or Kaiju Hachiko. So Chapter 82 came out a couple of days ago, and as always, I will leave a link to this chapter that's currently being shown on the publisher's official website, Manga Plus, for free to the North American audience. So if you're interested, yeah, I will go take a look at it before they pull this chapter back. Okay, so Chapter 82. So chapter 82 is one of those chapters that makes readers want to go let's go at the end of the chapter. And it's one of those chapters that makes you pumped up really well. And if you go to the comment section of Manga Plus for this chapter, you see a lot of commenters say exactly that after reading this chapter. Now if you recall in chapter 81, it was a pretty tense situation because we find out that all of the S-Class monsters were pitted against the JDF soldiers for a specific reason. Just like with the rock, paper, scissors sort of situation, every JDF soldier has its strength and their weakness. And so monster number nine, knowing the weakness of each one of these soldiers, pitted the worst possible monster for each one of these platoons. And what we found out in the end of chapter 81 is the one platoon that didn't have an overpowered JDF soldier was seriously being decimated. And chapter 82 starts from that. And what's interesting is chapter 82 starts with a kind of a character introduction. We're introduced to a new character, platoon leader Shinonome. She is this lady that is slumped over in front of monster number 13 as that monster is in the middle of trying to kill one of her teammates. And the annihilation was so severe that she is no longer even able to move and she can only sit there and watch the situation occur. However, what's interesting is this is a character introduction and a character backstory at the same time. And the way Matsumoto Naoya weaved the current story with the backstory was really well done. It almost felt a little bit like a movie rather than a comic. And so of course the things are going on right now and headquarters finally is able to get platoon leader Shinonome out of her trance and back into action again, telling her she needs to do something to be able to save her colleagues. And that is when we find out the background of platoon leader Shinonome. She used to be a member of Commander Narumi's team. And during that time, she was in awe of the amazing things that Commander Narumi did during the battles. And she always looked up to him and felt that he was a really good role model for someone she wanted to eventually be. She wanted to eventually get to a point where she could see division leader Narumi be proud of the actions that she did. And so she worked really hard to get to the point where she was and she was absolutely in surprise that Commander Narumi actually gave her the command of the platoon. And now we come back to this situation again, and she realizes that she cannot let Commander Narumi down, and that immediately triggers her ability to go up. And what we find out is, despite she not being to the level of Shinomiya or Narumi or Vice Commander Hoshina, she is a very powerful soldier. She could utilize her battle suit to 73%, which is very high amongst the soldiers. And from the actions that you see in this chapter, you realize that she is a very powerful member of the JDF. But this part of the chapter reminded me of a situation I kind of experienced and many of you probably experienced in the past. If you ever played a RPG video game, if you ever accidentally ran into a situation where you weren't supposed to be there, but you ended up being in front of a boss that was far, far more powerful than yourself. And it was supposed to be in a situation where you were supposed to meet this boss much, much later in the game, but you accidentally met this boss right now. That's the sort of situation that I felt Commander Shinonome was in because everything she did was right. And just like in that situation when you're playing the game and you're doing everything correct, but no matter what you do, it doesn't do anything to the opponent and they get one single punch in and all of a sudden you're at 5% of your life points. 
That's what you kind of see here because she is doing everything properly, but no matter what she did, it ends up in a situation where monster number 13 just blasts her away with a single strike. And at this point, you could see in Commander Shinonome's eyes that there is nothing she can do, absolutely nothing she can do to defeat this monster. And yet again, it is this commander that had an incredible amount of admiration for Division Commander Narumi. And even if she felt that she wasn't able to win the battle, she would do everything to prolong the battle until other members of the JDF, more powerful than her, such as Commander Narumi, can come and defeat the monster. She was not about to give up, and even if it costed her life, she will continue to go on to be able to hold the line. But of course, it doesn't matter. With a monster like this, nothing she did would help. And in the very end, she gets smashed into the ground and is no longer able to move. And with that, monster number 13 understands that all it has to do is kill her and this platoon will be destroyed. And once one single platoon goes down, it will demoralize all of the other groups that are fighting as well. And that was Monster Number no. Nine's plan. Too bad for your plan, because, of course, this is the platoon that Kafka is in. And we expected this to happen, or at least we hope this will happen, and it happened the way we all expected. Nothing is a surprise here, nothing is a twist here. This isn't really a creative chapter. But the way it was executed was so, so good because at the very end, you knew when Monster Number no. 13 brought down the finishing blow, platoon leader Shinonome was no longer there. And you saw Kafka carrying platoon leader Shinonome apologizing that he no longer could hold back and he needed to come into the fight. And so this was a really good chapter in being able to bring that up. And oh my gosh, the look that Kafka had at that time is probably one of the most intense stares that I've seen him do in this entire comic series so far. So it makes you pumped for knowing exactly what was going to happen and happen anyway, and you're still really happy about it. But of course, this is Kafka. We haven't seen Kafka for a long time, and considering he's the main character, we all wanted to see him in action. So one of the reasons we're also pumped is because we really want to find out what happens next. Now, if this is Kafka, I got a feeling for him to be able to take down monster number 13, he needs to become monster number eight. Because if platoon leader Shinonome cannot even scratch this monster, I don't care how much training he had, he's not going to be able to do anything to this monster in his human form. So he's going to have to become monster number eight. And the reason I feel that his human training is going to be useful is because Vice Commander Hoshina noted that up till now, Kafka has always defeated his enemies out of sheer brute strength, not out of skill. So now he's been training as a human in learning how to fight. And when you combine that with the sheer brutal power that Monster Number no. 8 has, this is going to be a very interesting story from this point on. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens in Chapter 83. And once it comes out, I'll bring out another video. I hope you join me at that time. But this is the chapter 82 discussion of Kaiju Hachiko. If you saw it, what'd you think about it? Any comments will be greatly appreciated. And until the next episode, happy manga reading. And as always, Jai and I stay everyone.